in to your Bethlehem. The harvest season is already in progress. You're going to walk into blessings, restorations, new opportunities, healing that God has already prepared. It's not at the place of sorrow, the place of loss, the place of heartache. Leave that place and move on to the new things God has in store. In the scripture, the prophet Samuel chose a young man named Saul to be the next leader of Israel. Saul was tall, strong, good looking. He looked like a king. I can imagine how proud Samuel was of Saul, that he took time to mentor him, teach him to lead with wisdom and excellence. And Saul started off good. He defeated armies, rescued the Israelites. But over time, Saul got off course. He started compromising, not making good decisions. Finally, God told Samuel that he was rejecting Saul as the king. Samuel was so disappointed, the scripture says he wept and wept. Like Naomi, he was at an empty place. He'd poured his heart and soul into Saul. He'd prayed for him, taken him under his wing. Now it looked like it was all a waste of time. Samuel was sitting around discouraged, in self-pity. 1 Samuel 16, God said, Samuel, how long are you going to mourn over Saul? God is asking us, how long are you going to mourn over what you've lost? How long are you going to be discouraged over the relationship that didn't work out? The position you didn't get? The loved one that didn't make it? The problem with continuing to mourn is it will keep you from going to Bethlehem. It will keep you from the harvest that's already in process from the new things God has in store. And yes, there's a time for mourning, but you can't let a season of mourning turn into a lifetime of mourning. God told Samuel, fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I'm sending you to the house of Jesse. I've chosen one of his sons to be the next king. I can imagine Samuel thinking, God, Saul is still on the throne. He's technically still in charge. You're telling me to anoint my future? while my past is still on the throne? You're telling me to start a feed store with 90 people? You're telling me to choose David? He's not tall, not experienced. How can he lead people? You're telling me to go back to Bethlehem? I just want to stay here in Moab. I've been through too much. Are you waiting for God to change things while God is waiting for you to anoint your future? That means you're not seeing anything happening, but you're believing, you're declaring, you're walking by faith and not by sight. The medical report doesn't look good, but I know God is restoring health back into me. Went through a loss, a bad break. I know what was meant for harm, God's turning to my advantage. Had a setback in my finances. Business went down, that's not the end. I know I will lend and not borrow. What I touch will prosper and succeed. You can't wait for everything to change, then you'll believe, then you'll have a good attitude. Oh, even though your past is still on the throne, you need to start declaring favor, restoration, health, victory. God told Samuel to fill your horn with oil. Oil signifies joy, praise, expectancy. Don't drag around, look what I've been through, man. This pandemic was so hard. My back's been hurting for three years. My boss won't give me any credit. Fill your horn with oil, not with complaints. Get your praise back. Put a smile on your face. Have a report of victory. If you'll fill your horn with oil and be on your way, you're going to see God tip the scales. Not a little bit, but he's going to open the windows of heaven. Bring great opportunities. New people turn mourning into dancing. He's not going to equal it up, the good and the bad. No, your destiny is going to far outweigh your history. Samuel was disappointed when Saul didn't work out. But he filled his horn with oil and anointed David. David was the greatest king that ever lived. Notice how good, notice how God does things. He doesn't trade an okay king for another okay king. God was saying, you lost something that was painful. You put time and energy into that relationship, that company, that dream. It didn't last. Don't worry, I'm about to send to David. I'm about to bring someone or something so awesome, so out of the ordinary, that it's going to far outweigh what didn't work out. There was a lady in the scripture that was about to give birth. She was an Israelite, 
She had just heard that the Ark of the Covenant had been stolen. That's where God's presence was. She was so upset, so distraught. When she gave birth, she named her son Ichabod. Ichabod means the glory has departed. She named her future based on her past. She could have just as easily named him the glory will return. She could have named him what Zechariah prophesied, double the glory. But she was so caught up in what she had been through, the disappointment, the heartache, that it soured her future. I wonder how many of us are doing the same thing. We're focused on what didn't work out, who hurt us, what we lost. We don't think it's ever going to change. Don't name your future based on your past. Get that Ichabod spirit off of you. This is a new day. God is doing a new thing. The enemies you've seen in the past, you will see no more. Here's what you should name your future. Blessed, prosperous, victorious, healthy, strong, wise, talented. Things may be rough right now, but your attitude should be, this is only temporary. It's just a matter of time before things change in my favor. I'm going to come out better off than I was before. This is what David did. He went through all kinds of heartache, disappointments, people coming against him. But he didn't name his future based on his past. He said, I am confident I will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. That's my prayer for you, that you will be confident that your best days are still in front of you. That you will know down deep that your destiny will outweigh your history. That the negative things of the past are not how your story ends. My question today is, are you weighing things too early? You've had disappointments. Life has thrown you some curves. Now you've accepted that you're limited. You had a disadvantage. Can I encourage you? The best part of your life is still in front of you. You wouldn't be breathing if there were not new victories and new opportunities. God saw everything that happened, the loss, the bad breaks, those weighed a lot, but there is favor coming that's going to tip the scale to where the blessing far outweighs the negative. Now do your part, anoint your future, even though the past is still on the throne. Dare to believe, start expecting favor. There is a harvest season God has already prepared, something already in the works that you're going to step into. I believe and declare, even now, things are shifting. The weight of the negative is going to pale in comparison to the weight of the glory. Like with Samuel, the disappointment was painful, but David is about to show up. Something better than you've imagined. Favor is coming, healing, restoration, promotion, breakthroughs, the fullness of your destiny in Jesus' name. And if you receive it, can you say amen today? I'd like to give you an opportunity to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Would you pray with me? Just say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. If you prayed that simple prayer, we believe you got born again. We'd love to send you some free information. Just text the number on the screen or go to the website. I hope you'll get into a good Bible-based church and keep God first place. Victoria and I will be right back to speak a blessing over you. Let me pray. If you've got five minutes, stick with me and we'll wrap it up in prayer. Lord, I thank you for what we've heard today. I know it falls on great ground. Faithful people here at Lakewood, so many have come out in person, those watching and listening. And Lord, we've all gone through things we don't understand, disappointments, but we're going out of here today knowing that you're in control. Lord, we're knowing that you have good things in store. Lord, we trust you with our future. Not going to try to figure everything out. We're going to just keep walking by faith, honoring you, being our best. And Lord, I thank you for what you promised, that you'll do for us what you did for Naomi, what you did for Samuel, that you have great things in our future. Lord, I ask you to bless your people during the week, protect them and their children, give them favor, creativity, good ideas, help them to walk in your ways in Jesus' name. With our heads bowed in prayer, just a quick question. If your heart stopped beating in the next few minutes, are you at peace with God? Do you know where you'd spend eternity? If not, I would love to pray with you. I'm not here to condemn anybody. I'm here to help you find a new beginning. I know that comes from a personal relationship 
with Jesus Christ. In just a moment, if you're not at peace with the Lord, or maybe you are a Christian, but you've grown cold toward God, you know you need to rededicate your life. You need a fresh new start. If that's you, in just a moment, I'm going to ask you to take a step of faith and stand right where you are, and we'll pray together. I can't think of a better time to get on the road to victory than right now. God's not mad at you. Your sins have already been forgiven. All you have to do is accept the free gift of Christ's salvation. Will you do it today? The enemy in your thoughts will tell you, do it next week. Do it another time. Listen, the Bible says, today is the day of salvation. You're not hearing this by accident. Well, Joel, it's embarrassing to stand in front of everyone. The people at my house, I don't want to lift my hand. Listen to what Jesus said. If you won't be ashamed of me before people, then I won't be ashamed of you before my Father in heaven. I want to give you a great opportunity to show God that you're not ashamed of Him. If you're not at peace with the Lord, or you just need to rededicate your life, you need a fresh new start, a new beginning. If that's you, would you be bold? Take that step of faith and stand right where you are, and we'll pray together. Would you do that? Come on, Lakewood, let's give them a hand as they stand all over the building. Come on, don't put it off. I feel like that would be a few more. Come on, who else wants to get on the road to victory? Don't go home without peace. Up top, watching, listening, slip up your hand. Anybody else? Anybody else? Still time for you. God bless you. Please remain standing if you don't mind. Let me tell you how proud we are of you. I know that took courage to stand. More importantly, I know the angels are rejoicing in the heavens. God's never going to be ashamed of you, but you took this step of faith. The scripture says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. We prayed once, but I want to pray it one more time. If you don't mind, everyone listening, would you pray this? Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Amen. Remain, remain standing. One more moment. I want to tell you how much we love you. We're going to be praying for you. Also want to give you a personal invitation and a challenge to come back and be with us on a regular basis. We ask new believers, give us the next year of your life. Make a commitment. Just like you go to work. It's going to be a priority. You're going to be here every time you can or you're going to watch online every time you can for this next year. I'll make a promise to you, at the end of that year, your life will never be the same for the better. We're going to help you grow and become who God created you to be. And I know you're busy, you got things to do. No, it's a fire hydrant. Oh, all right. God all right. First place. I hope you go online and take our New Beginnings course.